Welcome back. Let's take a look at some of the movers right now. This Friday, there's some action on Wall Street because we see right now Teva is gaining. It's higher by about a half of 1%. It did get an upgrade to a buy over at Argus. There's General Motors also moving higher after China deliveries were reported lower by 12.2% from the second quarter, but you do see it up about three quarters of 1%. 3M today is the biggest loser in the Dow Jones Industrial Average, down by almost 2%. Finally, happy birthday, Amazon. It's the company's 25th birthday today. The stock nearly unchanged, but trading slightly uh, right now up to the upside. 1939 is where Amazon is sitting for its 25th birthday. And for now, let's get to some great stock picks because Melissa Armo is here, founder and owner of the Stock Swoosh. Glad you're here today nice because the market is open and we're seeing movers and we're looking at some of the things that you're going to be picking. I have your stock picks, but before we get to that, how are you feeling about the market? We got the jobs report. We're going to hear from Powell next week. You know, he was calling it the Humphrey Hawkins testimony. It's what we used to call it. And then it's Fed Day. How are you feeling about the markets overall? I feel really the same as I did back in May, we were talking about it, and I said, listen, this summer is going to be wild for markets. I still feel that. Even though we've had a rally, it's been really a choppy rally because we haven't had any real follow-through days where you would see the market run up, close green big. Those are the kinds of days you want to see, and we really haven't seen that. Even though we've been sort of rallying, then we drop, and like we're down today, and we're trying to move over the high. I mean, the market has been choppy, and I expect that that will continue. And right. one of the reasons is that this market is very driven by tweets and news and that is very unusual yeah. it's hard for traders to trade because you you have the fed that takes a stance back in 2018 that we're going to raise rates then they raise rates the market collapses in december and then they change their stance completely it's like they, they did a 360 degree turnaround and now you don't know what's going to happen next time around are they going to drop rates are they going to drop rates twice this year three times this year not at all I mean, it's really hard. When you look at it, it's like the little boy that cried wolf, and you say, well, I don't know if I believe him this time. Yeah, you and understand? you know, a lot of people are even, yeah, there's so many people who come on here and think they shouldn't cut at all because things are good. But let's get to Disney. This is a name that you've been touting for some time. You've loved that it's been a winner. Every yep. time you come on, we say, hey, it hit another high. You still like, yup, I still like it. I mean, just had Toy Story 4. It didn't hit it as high as it hoped, but... Still, it's been a winner. It's been leading the box office. Uh, so what are your thoughts on Disney? Disney is strong. I don't know if Disney really has another big move until after the earnings. So the earnings on Disney are August 15th, I think. That, that's an unconfirmed, but you can check it. I'm sure Ameritrade has it somewhere in the site. But long story short, Disney has been holding like this in a base around that 140, 145. 142 level, and yeah. that's good. It looks like it's ready to break out. Now, whether it breaks out or not before the earnings, I can't say for sure, but Disney really still looks very, very strong to me. Even when the market wiggles and jiggles, Disney right. is holding. Disney has a lot of potential. Fundamentally, I like Disney, and technically speaking, I like Disney. Now, that doesn't mean that the earnings are going to be good. I really don't know what they're going to say, but then you say, well, it's hard-pressed to, dis to determine what any earnings are going to be until they report, but what could they possibly say bad? There's so many good things on the horizon for Disney that my expectation is that it's going to make a pop after yeah. the earnings. Yeah, I mean, the only thing they could probably say is some global headwinds or theme parks abroad or something like that. But um, I see your point. I mean, yeah. they really have done exceptionally well. The stock's up about 30% this year. You made a note in your notes about dividend payer as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, so, uh, or I saw that actually this it's morning. A, it's a good buy. At. It's a great one. Yeah. I, it's interesting. We'll see what happens on that. But you like it for a longer term play. Longer too. term, like I'm talking out the next 12 to even 24 months. I mean, yeah. Disney could get to a $200 price target. That is not completely insane. I'm not I'm gonna, saying this year. I'm not saying in August. I'm saying in the next 12 to 24 months, Disney could run up to that level. I'm going to challenge your short play because <laughs> you want to short Boeing. But I have talked with, seen, read so many things about Boeing that are positive. It's in the aerospace and defense. This 737 MAX is just a small part of what Boeing does. Mm -hmm. And everything's out there. They've been honest. They, it's it's cleared. True. It's going to be flying again. But you still think I, it's a well, short. Well, I look at the technicals. So okay, the fundamentals, I don't really follow. All, I, I don't make decisions based on fundamentals. Sometimes they match up with the technicals. Sometimes they don't. In this case, 
you can go with the fundamentals and say the fundamentals are positive. But when I look at the technicals of BA, the stock has dropped and fallen off since a big rally that it had back a huh. couple weeks ago. I forget the exact date. It had a right. huge rally. It's lost all of that rally completely. And, you know, again, even if the news right now seems good, technically speaking, the stock has fallen off after a massive rally, and that is a negative sign. And also, you have to remember that's a big <laughs> component of the Dow. And if, if yeah. the market goes sideways, if the tariff issues affect the market in a big way, Boeing's going to drop. All these big stocks are going to drop, and Boeing's <laughs> going to be right there with it. So even still, if the market ends up dropping, if the Dow ends up dropping, Boeing's going to go. And if Boeing drops, it's going to pull the Dow down. Right. It's like this. It's like Apple with the Qs. And then that spooks people's confidence overall yeah. when they see the Dow dropping. I, I mean, there I saw one target, price target. They put it at 413. It's at 356. So, I mean, there are people who believe to the upside, but I see your point. It's caught well, in that range right now, in that 350 yeah. range. If it was over 400, I'd have a different viewpoint, but it's not. And particularly okay. speaking, that huge rally it had just recently in the last month, it didn't hold that rally. We're, we were underneath that rally. It gapped down underneath that rally. That is a bad, bad sign, technically. Again, I'm going technically speaking. And beyond meat, what are the technicals on that? It's up 500% from that $25 IPO just in this one month. You know, people said hey, it's already hit the top, it's hit the top, get out. But meanwhile, just in this one month, it's up 50%. So, uh, what are your thoughts on well, the, the day when we meet? talked the last time? I was on, I said I liked it, and I said Target is 200. It gapped up there that next day, the day after we talked. It went to 200. I don't know if you oh, followed it. It was the day goodness. after we talked. If you bought it the day we talked, if all of your viewers and all the traders at Ameritrade bought it that day, the stock went up to 200, the number that I said yes. the next day. Yes. So okay. this stock is, is poised to rally. So it's going to go back to 200? I don't know if it goes back to 200. It may wait to the next earnings as well. Right now, that's in a range here. It's in a it's tight, tight range. Would but you I'm, buy it? You're recommending you to could, buy you it? Could, you, if you want the confirmation, I would wait until the next earnings is what I would do because I it see. just had the earnings. We're going into the next earnings season. And those coming were good. Up the, the last were good. set of numbers But I'm good. saying people have been shorting, shorting, shorting this and saying, oh, this is the end. This is going to go lower. Yeah. This is this. That that I yeah. do not see at all, technically speaking. And again, it's a new issue. So some of these plays, I'd be in and out like that. Like if you'd bought it the day we talked about it and got out the next morning, that would have been the right thing to do. You got to take it, make the money, and run to yeah. the bank with it you in this stock. I'm yeah. in the money. I'm in the money. All yeah. right. Thanks for joining me. Thanks. Melissa Thanks for Armo, me. founder and owner of The Stock Swoosh. Great to see you and have a nice weekend. Our next guest sees 35% upside to Square's stock. We'll explain why. And before you head to break, we have some good news for our viewers with the Apple devices. Another way to watch us on the go. Check it out, TD Ameritrade Network iOS app. It's available for download in the App Store right now. You can watch us live, catch up on your video on demand, create your favorite playlist. Download the TD Ameritrade Network app right now from the App Store so you can watch us wherever you go. We'll be right back just after a quick break. <laughs> 